Hey there, Pete Salsk again. I'm the screen lawyer. Is there music in your video content? Are you using recorded music of any kind to sync it with your video, to put it on YouTube, or to create content for others, particularly if you're putting together a film or work for a client? You need a synchronization license, and it means just that, syncing the music with your audiovisual. Stay tuned, I'll tell you how that works. Every good piece of video content these days has music in it, right? Can you even imagine um, a, a video that you see that doesn't have some music embedded somewhere? Well, this one, but even there we're working on getting music in these ones, and we'll have to go through this process ourselves. The point is this, if you're going to have recorded music embedded in your video content, regardless of where that content's going to end up, you need a synchronization license, and it does just what it says. It's the synchronizing of already recorded music in time with certain video content to produce an audiovisual whole. That's a synchronization license. It's not something that you can just go grab off the web. It's not an automatic. You need to get actual permission from the copyright owners and it includes two copyrights. There's the copyright in the underlying musical composition itself, that's the song, and that copyright is going to be owned by the songwriter or often the songwriter and a publisher if they have a publishing agreement. But the point is those are copyright owners in the song itself. Now if you want to use a particular version of that song, that recorded version with your video, you also need the permission of the owner of the copyright in the sound recording. This is often referred to as a master use license because you're going to use the master recording, that particular version of the song, in your video. And that copyright is often going to be held by the record label, or um, some other kind of distribution company, perhaps the band or the artist themselves. And sometimes the same party is going to own the original song, the underlying musical composition copyrights, as well as a sound recording. That's certainly possible. But the point is, they are two separate and distinct copyrights, and they are often owned by different people. So what do you do? You've got to find out who owns both aspects of the sound that you, the song that you want to use. You can go to BMI. ASCAP, CSAC, those are great resources. Those three resources essentially probably most of the recorded music you're looking for you can search, you can find the version that you want to use, and that'll indicate who owns the sound recording, uh, who the performers were, and ultimately points you to who owns the songwriting or publishing credit. You may have to do a little more digging and you've got to put the, a request out to those particular owners in order to get the rights that you need to embed that music. There's another point, maybe you've figured it out here. This doesn't always happen quickly. So early in your rights clearance process, if your final content is going to be due three months from now, you need to be starting now on your music or even sooner so that you've got the right to negotiate. It may be more expensive. You may need to have some backup music to consider. In other words, don't fall in love with music and just grab it and pull it off and put it in your content and then a week before go around and see if you can get the rights. Also important, you may need to include some money in your budget for sync licenses because sometimes these cost money. As we've talked about before with other kinds of releases though, maybe a stair-step approach will help you depending on the nature of the usage you want to make out of your content. So again, if your initial usage is going to be short-term and limited usage, maybe the sync license rights are also very small. But if you want to expand the usage, you don't want to have to go back later to those copyright owners and say, hey, we decided that this thing could really live on the web or Netflix is interested. Can we use the music? And they say no, or suddenly it's much more expensive. So just as you might use with your other copyright licenses, a stair-step approach, pre-agreeing on an increased usage, maybe there's three or four steps when it comes to the music. The point is there's some amount of money you can pay to get the unlimited rights that you need. You just pre-agree on that amount and then you exercise that option by sending a written notice along with the check and the payment. The point at the end of the day though is again as we said before this is a copyright deal. The rights that you need for your use you must get from the original copyright owners. Music is just the same as any other copyright in that way. So one more part of the rights clearance process, the music synchronization license process. 
It's not painful. It doesn't have to be scary, but this one may take you some time. So get started.